Thank you guys for tuning in and watching the Buffalo Fanatics. If you guys like what you see and you like the videos and the content that we provide, click every link in this description or go to the IG page, go to the Facebook page, but most importantly, keep tuning in on YouTube. If you guys like the merch, www.bffanshop.com. And if most importantly, you want to join the Fanatic team, the Bing team, www.jointhefanatics.com. I'll see you then. It's your boy and I'm gone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again, ready to bring you a new segment to the Buffalo Fanatics. And it's the questions of the week. In our community tab on the YouTube page, we allow you guys to ask your questions. When I go live, there are times where I cannot read all your questions. Here's the deal. I pick up the best questions and I put them in a video right now. So, since it's the first one, I took the best ones that I can choose for you guys to really chomp on. See what you guys feel about it. And if you guys have really good questions that you're dying to find out, what is Rico's take? What's the Buffalo Fanatics take? I'll let y'all know. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first question comes from my friend, Scott Devereaux. Scott Devereaux has a really good question. Here it is. Why isn't Singletary getting 20 plus touches a game? That is the million dollar question that everyone's wondering. We drafted the man in the third round. We even as much got rid of Shady McCoy to get Singletary more touches in the game. First game, great job. Second game, fantastic job, but got tweaked and hurt. But now that he's back in the game and healthy, why isn't he getting the ball enough? The real question really goes to head coaching and the offensive coordinator. Do they not have the plan to have him in the game? Does it make sense not to have him? Here's my honest opinion. I feel that we haven't had a steady enough lead in games where we could close out games by giving the ball up. We're having to throw the ball to stay in the game and just squeak out a victory in the end. So it doesn't allow us to really get to touches. Now, Frank Gore isn't getting 20 plus touches. So they're trying to split the time between the two. Here's the even more interesting thing. Last game alone, Singletary had 68% of playing time, while Frank Gore had 28. The tide is shifting. It's going to come time to when Singletary starts to take over games. But here's the thing. Our quarterback has to establish himself and get us in comfortable leads in order for us to take advantage of the run game. But if we're constantly having to try to come back and win these games, it's hard to establish a run game. If we get enough ahead, we can now use the motor. That's just my opinion, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Scott Devereaux, thanks for that question. Moving on to the next one. Here comes the next question. This comes from my guy, Thomas Falzone, another member part of the Bing team. Yes, sir, the Bing team. So check this out. Thomas Falzone asks, when are you going to have a call-in show for when you go live? That's a fantastic question, Thomas. And guess what? I got an answer for you. The call-in show is coming soon. I figured it out. We're going to start getting lit on the live shows. I just got to choose a time and place as to when I can make this thing happen. We already have the post-game press on Sundays after the game. In the middle of the week, I might try to figure out when I can have a call-in show. So tune in. I'm going to let y'all know when that call-in show is happening. By the way, we need a name for the title of the show for this call-in show. What y'all got? Let me know. Thank you for that question, Thomas Falzone. Moving on to the next question. Robin H. asked a very legitimate question. Why didn't we move Robert Foster on trade deadline? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And that's a very good question. Here's my answer. Maybe the value wasn't there. Number one. Maybe nobody was calling. That's number two. And number three, I believe that they still have a big part for Robert Foster in this offense going forward. He's been nursing an injury. He's starting to get healthy. This is the time where you put up or shut up. This game, I'll give it to him. He tried. He had 8% in this game. That's how much time he spent on the field. 8% of the game he spent on the field. That's simply not enough. Is he going to get a role 
going forward? I believe so. They benched Isaiah McKenzie for Robert Foster. So that tells me they're going to start to integrate him more and make him part of the game plan because allegedly the last two games, he wasn't part of the game plan. Very interesting. So why didn't they trade him? Probably nobody was giving a call for that. That's as simple as that. All right, Robin H. Thank you for that question. Moving on to the next question. This one was question of the week. We chose this one as the best question of the week and it got featured on the Instagram page. If you guys want to find out how to get onto the Instagram page, we have got 60 plus thousand followers. We added to our stories. You got to ask a fire question. So let's go. Question of the week goes to James Calkins. How long should we wait for our rookie quarterback to prove he's a number one player, a number one quarterback? Oh, that's a good one. It's a, it's a head scratcher. Uh, you know what? You got me. You got me scratching my head because there are so many different answers. The professionals say 20 games in, you should know if you have the guy or not. 20 starts. 20 starts in, you start to realize, all right, is this the guy or is he not the guy? In my opinion, usually around year three. First year is a wash, you're a rookie. If you excel, great. If you have a poo-poo year, it's understandable. You're a rookie. Second year, you should take your strides. You start to get better. You start to understand the game. You start to make your better reads. The speed of the game starts to slow down. Third year, that's when you take over. That's when you know that you are the man. We're in the second year with Josh Allen. This is his first official full year. Last year, Nate Peterman was the guy running the show until he got benched in the first damn game. We already know how that went down, right? And then Allen took over as a raw rookie that didn't get a lot of time during the offseason. He's now a full offseason in, in his second year, going into week eight. This is the time to now start to see some strides from our quarterback. By next year, I ain't trying to hear any damn excuses. This is the time. You've got to prove yourself. This game moves quickly. If we don't see production out of the players that we draft, we got to start thinking ahead and finding a replacement. Let's not talk about replacements just yet. Let's figure out what we got in our quarterback. And here's hoping that this year is the year that he puts it together and next year we take off. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's our show. We are going to be taking on questions every week. Ask those fire questions and we're going to put it in the damn video. So until next time, it's your boy, and I'm gone.